Pride and Prejudice, by Jane Austen. Chapter 39 It was the second week in May, in which the three young ladies set out together from Grace Church Street for the town of in Hertfordshire, and, as they drew near the appointed end where Mr. Bennet's carriage was to meet them, they quickly perceived, in token of the coachman's punctuality, both Kitty and Lydia looking out of a dining room upstairs. These two girls had been above an hour in the place, happily employed in visiting an opposite milliner, watching the sentinel on guard, and dressing a salad and cucumber. After welcoming their sisters, they triumphantly displayed a table set out with such cold meat as an inn larder usually affords, exclaiming, Is not this nice? Is not this an agreeable surprise? And we mean to treat you all, added Lydia, but you must lend us the money, for we have just spent hours at the shop out there. Then, showing her purchases, Look here, I have bought this bonnet. I do not think it is very pretty, but I thought I might as well buy it as not. I shall pull it to pieces as soon as I get home, and see if I can make it up any better. And when her sisters abused it as ugly, she added, with perfect unconcern, Oh, but there were two or three much uglier in the shop, and when I have bought some prettier colored satin to trim it with fresh, I think it will be very tolerable. Besides, it will not much signify what one wears this summer, after the Shire have left me right in, and they are going in a fortnight. Are they indeed? cried Elizabeth, with the greatest satisfaction. They are going to be encamped near Brighton, and I do so want Papa to take us all there for the summer. It would be such a delicious scheme, and I dare say would hardly cost anything at all. Mamma would like to go too of all things. Only think what a miserable summer else we shall have. Yes, thought Elizabeth, underscore that underscore would be a delightful scheme indeed, and completely do for us at once. Good heaven! Brighton, and a whole camp full of soldiers, to us, who have been overset already by one poor regiment of militia, and the monthly balls of me Brighton. Now I have got some news for you said Lydia, as they sat down at table. What do you think? It is excellent news, capital news, and about a certain person we all like. Jane and Elizabeth looked at each other, and the waiter was told he need not stay. Lydia laughed, and said, Aye, that is just like your formality and discretion. You thought the waiter must not hear, as if he cared. I dare say he often hears worse things said than I am going to say. But he is an ugly fellow. I am glad he is gone. I never saw such a long chin in my life. Well, but now for my news. It is about dear Wickham. Too good for the waiter, is it not? There is no danger of Wickham's marrying Mary King. There's for you. She has gone down to her uncle at Liverpool. Gone to stay. Wickham is safe and Mary King is safe, added Elizabeth, safe from a connection imprudent as to fortune. She is a great fool for going away, if she liked him. But I hope there is no strong attachment on either side, said Jane. I am sure there is not on underscore his underscore. I will answer for it, he never cared three straws about her, who could about such a nasty little freckled thing? Elizabeth was shocked to think that, however incapable of such coarseness of underscore expression underscore herself, the coarseness of the underscore sentiment underscore was little other than her own breast had harbored and fancied liberal.